everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays today, where you boys always have something to say for the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I'm your host, Adam Peddle, and today, guys, we've got the latest Blue Jays news for you guys, and a little bit of revisiting of the Otani stuff, and as well, the what's on the thumbnail and what's on the title. Kevin Gosman, he went to Twitter today, and he called out all of the haters that have been hating on the Blue Jays, shout hating out. on Toronto, so big shout out to our ace, we're going to get into those details, out. as well as some other guys. Like other former Blue Jay players that have been calling out these haters. We're all going to, you know, and we're gonna also going to go through a little bit of group therapy, I think, in this session. Because, like, last time we were on this live, on this channel, mm -hmm. we were just announcing the Dodgers uh, signing Otani. And I think we were just kind of reacting. And, and But now we've had a few days to kind of just go into our feels. And I think we're going to we're gonna voice and, and speak about uh, just moving on and, and transitioning yeah 100 you know I mean? I mean in complete transparency folks like literally directly before we hit the record button like we were just discussing saying that it does feel like a before and an mm. after feeling right like it's almost as if you know not to get so dramatic but it feels like as a as a whole unit here like we just went through something went you know through hell, so, man. went it, through hell literally right like, it's like i'm so fatigued and just tired in general <laughs> of like blue jays rumors and everything and i mean we're not gonna dive too deep into, into it into this one but like all of the stuff coming out about Cody Bellinger's oh. girlfriend and everything oh like that. Like, God. like, it was giving me a legitimate headache it's to like just, like, try to comprehend where people were at no, with that. I, I saw that rumor, and again, we're going to talk about this on a podcast tomorrow, but, like, man, I saw that, and, like, I just wanted to just scream, like, shut up. Like, it's just, I, don't even ca I don't even care if it was real. Just shut yeah, up. I, I am so tired. I would be totally content with, for the rest of my life, Never ever going on a plane tracker. Never. Again. I am never going. <laughs> I don't. Like, I'm sorry, mom. If you're flying to Florida and you really want me to track you, I can't. Uh, I have triggering. PTSD. Yeah. Okay. Too I, you, might, you might come down as a billionaire, and I'll be like, "Where's my mom?" Yeah. You know. A hundred percent, dude. Let's get to the Kevin Gosman stuff, everybody. Uh, this is why he's our race. This is why he is mm -hmm. the man, dude. Uh, Kevin Gosman came out on Twitter today and said, "I hate." seeing people talk shit about Toronto like they know it. Mm -hmm. If you live in Toronto, you know how special of a place it is and how passionate the people are. And I, I know how passionate all of you all of y'all are, right? We are passionate fans right here. You guys, if you're tuning into this live stream, if you're if you're re-watching it, you are passionate fans. So you totally know where Kevin Gosman is coming from. And this was all sparked because John Heyman came out with an article, and there was a lot of triggering stuff in there. That, hey, this is what's good for baseball, right? Shohei Otani going to the Dodgers. This is this is good for the MLB. If he went to Toronto, that wouldn't be good for the sport. That right. wouldn't be good for the game. Right, yeah. Ridiculous. Well, well okay, let me let me speak on that. I know we said we were we muted. were muted. Are we still muted? What's going mm. on? Okay, apparently we're back. We're back. Okay, now. we're back now. Uh, yeah, I think there was some uh, th something wrong with the screen. I, I won't go back to that seventh screen. Uh, but to co comment about the whole, like, Blue Jays and they are bad for baseball. You also had Ricky Romero coming out here. Uh, I'll flash over Ricky Romero. You had him coming out. And I don't know if you guys have been following him. He was watching, I think it was MLB Network. This is MLB. No, no. Again, what the hell is going on? I don't know why that's happening. I don't know why that's happening. Sorry, folks. I don't know why that's happening. I guess we can't show you guys anything that's over there right now. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but basically, over there, you had that guy saying, "Hey, MLB, like Blue Jays, they're a foreign country. You know, their TV ratings don't even matter. Are you kidding me? This is MLB Network talking." Okay, so our TV ratings don't matter. Why? Because they're owned by Rogers? Because you don't benefit any money from when Otani goes over to the Blue Jays if he were to in this reality? That's BS. No, it's that's it's, absolute BS. It's, it's complete garbage. And he's not the only people that have come out and said this, right? All of these analysts are coming at Toronto and and saying that like this is not the spot. And and the specific 
and most triggering quote from John Heyman's article was was when he came out and when he said that Toronto has a small town feel mm-hmm. to a small time feel small to time it. Feel. Uh, excuse me, right? A small time feel. Now I clipped that and I put that on Twitter and I just put the populations of all of the cities in North America. Just a statistic, Toronto mm-hmm. is fourth in all of North, North America, and the first city, Mexico City, is not in mm-hmm. the MLB, right? So you would say that we are the third biggest city in all of the MLB. Apparently, we have a small town, uh, small, small time, time feel. vibe uh, uh, to to our uh, to our city. We were gonna show you guys. I guess we can't anymore. Can't but we were it. we were gonna no. show you the Jose Bautista bat flip, but I mean, all of you guys know the Jose Bautista bat flip. Small, small time, small yeah. time vibe. Oh yeah, that, that the, happened in, in, in that right it's there. It's like everybody forgets, but just because the Blue Jays haven't been deep in a playoff in the last few years, oh, we all just forget the kind of vibe that the Rogers Center can have, man. Like you've only seen two playoff games in the Rogers Center in, since 2016, right? Since after 2016, so you all, everyone forgot about the the baseball, you know, culture. In Canada, and, and that's such a, and I hate to make it an American in Canada thing, but it is at this point. Mm-hmm. It, it straight up is like Americans don't see, they don't live in Toronto, and that's what Kevin Gosman saying. When you're here, you see it, mm-hmm. you feel it. You go to the Rogers Center, you feel it, you see it. You don't get that on TV. It's very different, man. And, I, and I, I'm sick and tired of the bias. I'm sick and tired of the bias that Americans have on Canada, especially not just American people. It's not a thing about to do with the people. The people are mer- amazing. It's the media. It's the American media that has against the Toronto Blue Jays because they don't benefit if big if big time players go to Toronto. It does feel like this off season, especially, it is exacerbated. And I mean, look, I'm not gonna cry victim here, but but you are hitting us when we're down, you know. And for I think real. That that's also kind of why that this is a big sticking point right now for a lot of Toronto Blue Jays fans. Like we are hurting, we are reeling, we did just go through something, and understandably so, we lost. GG LA Dodgers, like, you guys got us in that front. I tried to be as as calm and and level-headed on Twitter as I could be when everybody was coming at us and just say, hey, listen, like, the best team won. You know, like, we, we gave it our best shot and we did lose. But it does suck to hear that after the fact, all of these people are coming out and saying, hey, listen, like, it's good for baseball that he didn't go there because your city is so small and everything like that. You know, it, it's just, it is completely ridiculous. It's abhorrent. And it jo- it goes to show uh, just an ignorant mindset. Yeah. Moving forward uh, to uh, the other interesting yeah. piece of news with Shohei Otani, everybody, and the LA Dodgers, and what is apparently good for baseball, it was just revealed. Shohei Otani's contract. Now, we knew that he was going to get paid $700 million over 10 years, right? And when you looked at spot rack, when you looked at everything like that, it said $70 million per year. That's not what is going to be happening with Mr. Shohei Otani. No, not anymore. And I do want to flash it up. So I'm going to take two seconds, y'all, and I'm going to fix this audio. I got to flash over here. So give me two seconds, and I want to show you how we're doing. Get to see All the right, back there we end go. the Blue Jays today right there, everybody. <laughs> yeah, there we yeah. go. Back in, everybody. See all your comments. Shout out to everybody who's in the chat right now. Y'all are absolute legends. Let me flash this over, y'all. This is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, shout out to Jared. Yeah. Jared, Jared Carabas. You know, he, he came out here and actually quoted exactly what I think most people who are not an LA Dodger fan are thinking. Yeah. yeah he says, yeah. right, uh, Jeff Passan saying, Shohei Otani's $700 million contract calls for him to be only paid $2 million a year for the next 10 seasons with a $680 million deferred until the end of the deal. So he's getting paid $20 million by the LA Dodgers until 2020. Three, I believe it is. Yeah. And it begins in 2024. Holy shit. Well, first of all, my first thoughts is how is this even legal? Just like Jared is saying. But apparently there's this we've never seen this before. We've never seen that amount of money being deferred by really any player of this caliber. Mm. What are your first thoughts when you heard this, bro? No, it's it's crazy, dude. It is a hundred percent crazy. And and I do understand where Jared is coming from in the sense that it doesn't feel legal because you were talking about the greatest player of potentially all time ever gonna get paid I uh, like less than Espinal, you know, like le- like yeah. literally like less than all of these other guys who you know are just dudes who might ride the bench, <laughs> right? For real, this is crazy, and and it you know you could argue why it shouldn't be allowed because if you're the LA Dodgers, you're completely skirting around the luxury tax like it's it's not there for you now it is very smart and i need to uh, give a lot of credit to the la dodgers and Shohei otani's camp for figuring this out 
They are now going to go out and they're going to get every other guy, right? Yoshi Yoshinobu Yamamoto. They are now the odds-on definitive favorites to go get that guy. And who knows? Maybe they're going to punt some of that money down the road too. Well, yeah. I mean, I did hear the New York teams were in on them, but obviously this came out just 30 minutes ago. Yeah. So like, I think that conversation is going to change a little bit. Because if I, like you said to me before, if I'm Otani, I'm going to talk to Yamamoto. Like, bro, we could run. LA mm -hmm. we could both play on this team for the price of one all-star player yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like it, it makes absolute sense but also just kind of comment on like the whole ordeal first of all if it was me if it was my team if if, if Otani came to Canada came to Toronto and we may somehow made this deal we're gonna we only pay him uh you know two million a year I'd probably be saying like wow I don't know how the hell we did that but that's amazing no, so I would be on the other side of things. It's a it's but, a very good thing then, for a business. Right, but then you then you're gonna have the U.S. media going, "What the hell is this?" Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas right now you have a lot of the uh, L.A. Uh, media saying this is great for baseball because now we can win more chips. Well, okay, maybe you so, know? but you're also getting people like Jared, who is part of the media, coming out and saying from Boston, this shouldn't be legal from Boston. Sure, right? yeah, yeah. I I, just, I don't want to generalize everybody and lump them into it because I have seen a lot of comments on Twitter saying that. This is kind of crazy right yes. now. Because it is, even John Boy came out and was like, what the hell is this, yeah. right? Yeah. It is nuts to think that this the best player is going to get paid $2 million. Now, again, incredible piece of business from the Dodgers. But it goes to show that the MLB and their rules surrounding payrolls and luxury tax and everything like that, it needs to get reworked. Because he, this guy, you shouldn't be allowed to punt all the money down the road, especially because the luxury tax and everything like that, in a decade's time, it will change. So the $68 million that you're going to be paying for the following decade after this, even though that is still a large chunk of money, it is going to be less of a hit because the luxury tax is going to rise significantly in the next decade. So incredible piece of business, Yeah. but it but it also it, it really requires a few it, rule changes, I it, think. It's the thing. It's it makes sense. It's legal as of right now, of course. It is legal, and it's going to go through, and MLB's mm -hmm. not going to do anything about it because it is. it does make a lot of sense because here's the thing. Not a lot of players are in Sho Shohei Otani's you know, position. No. Where they're, they, don't, they don't care if they make two mil. Otani's going to make, I don't know the numbers, 25 to 50 mil a year on, on sponsorships. Sure. You know, you know what I mean? Like whatever, how else he's going to make money, he's going to be fine. And then he's going to go in a, and get that – other 68 million when he's done playing baseball every single year for 10 for the next 10 years so yeah. for from that standpoint it makes sense for Otani now for the Dodgers you got to be thinking yeah the luxury tax thing is going to be great for them where it's like okay at least it's a little bit less back uh, for a little later but they are still gonna have a big hole of 68 million dollars no matter how low the luxury tax is that's still 68 million dollars and who knows what players will be costing down the road but essentially that's like two maybe three Big, big players in your team. Yeah, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I get a comment here from Andy saying the 68 does not go against the tax when deferred. If that's the case, then that is complete cheating in my mind. Uh, it, that's if somebody, insane. Somebody comment and let us know if that is legit or not. I'm you know, not entirely familiar with all of the ongoings of this. What we do know, though, is that for the next 10 years of Shohei Otani's tenure with the LA Dodgers, this is going to turn into a super team similar to a basketball similar to the Lakers you know yep. where you are going to get all of these stars flooding in here wanting to win a chip because you, they are going to have the best squad right you yep. are now anchored down by Shohei Otani the greatest player potentially ever who's only getting paid two mil that's your anchor you know on that's top insane. of having Mookie Betts uh you locked down forever and Freddie yep. Freeman locked down forever right this is your core now and you can go out and you can get anybody that you want, right? So if they do, even though they're going to be paying a lot of money later down the line, if they do win one or two or three chips in that time frame, which would, I would argue, yeah. is probably pretty likely, that is a massive W for them, and they found a way to get around the system as well. Yeah, they're going to go get some pitchers right now. and At least in the next few years, they're going to get some pitchers because they need that rotation boosted. That's their next goal. Go get Snell. Go get uh, go get yeah, Yoshida Yamamoto. Uh, you know, go get anybody you want. Hell, I just thought in my mind right now, the idea of Bo Bichette leaving the team. Where would he go and play? Dodgers. Yeah. They need a shortstop. Why not? Right. Go play for the Dodgers. Well, I think I think Why if not? you're if you are any free agent now, if you're any free agent now, or anybody whose contract is coming up, right, and you look over the LA Dodgers and you go, hey, I'm a really good player. Mm -hmm. I, if I leave right now, I know that they have money to spend. I could go play with Otani. I could yeah. I could be the odds-on. I could make playoffs every single year. 
Yeah, I could make not? playoffs every why single not? year and have a shot to win a World Series title, right? So it does, and I could li- be living in L.A. Yeah. It does make sense, right? And again, like, as much as I would love to see Bo Bichette stay with this team, I would totally understand the logic if he did make it free agency, and then yeah. if the L.A. Dodgers come knocking and say, here's $300 million, yeah, come play sense. shortstop for us. That makes sense. That now, makes I sense, do bro. wonder, <laughs> I do wonder... If all of this stuff with the cap, with this new deferred deal from Shohei Otani, I do wonder if now you're going to start to see potentially higher offered contracts, higher total uh, monetary value offered in contracts, but with the caveat that we only have to pay you 15% or 20% of your average annual value, right? You know what? And if like that guy said in the chat, I'm not going to pretend like I know finances here. If that's true, where he doesn't count towards a luxury tax later, that's beautiful. Hell, Bellinger, you want to come here? And we're going to talk about that in a later podcast. You want to come here? Fuck. Like, I don't care. I'll, I'll give you whatever you want, man. It doesn't matter to me. But it but it only works. It only works if you are a team with uh, with a crazy amount of money. Like yeah. the Mets, yeah. like the Dodgers, like the Yankees. Because for any other team, that doesn't work, right? Because right. the money actually matters to you. But for squads where the money doesn't matter, yeah. when it really, do, like this is nothing to them, right? It's only ever trying to flirt with the luxury tax and just, you know, whatever, we'll give up any money. Then this makes perfect sense because if you were to get somebody like Cody Bellinger for say, yep. and you could pay him, you could pay him $250 million and, and he gets $25 million a year for 10 years, right? Or you could pay him three hundred million dollars but you only pay them five million a year yeah and then the rest gets deferred yeah then that is now on the table for you if the money doesn't matter look if it all works out i, I don't care how you get it done it, to be frank uh rogers I, rogers is one of those teams that's gonna get it done like blue jays gonna be a team that could possibly do that are you if, sure dude, i mean based I on everything so. that we just saw this past week look I, i'm talking about like the ability to spend money they sure. have the ability to spend as much money as they possibly want I think you're referring to, are we even going to get the players that are going to be worth it because are they going to want to come and play? Well, I mean, Scott Boris's agents, or Scott Boris, uh, Scott Boris's clients, they've been coming to Toronto. I think that's a possibility. Bellinger's a possibility for sure. Yeah, yeah. Bellinger so I, I think, is. look, if they want to get it done, if they want to use that strategy, fuck, I don't even care. Just get a winning team on the field. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, Shout out to Nathaniel Reisenberg with the $5 donation. The issue is if the Blue Jays were also pitching, uh, if the Blue Jays were also pitching deferred, then maybe Blue Jays do not have the resources to land major free agents this year. I don't entirely follow your logic there, Nathaniel. Maybe you can explain a little bit later. Mm. Shout out to the 630 people who are watching right now. Guys, if you haven't already done so, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. We do apologize for some of the uh, audio Mm -hmm. uh, delays earlier. We do need to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody. If you were to bet on the LA Dodgers right now for a World Series, uh, it it would be really good, guys, because they are, in fact, the odds-on favorites to win. So, yep, everything is good in Dodgers land, but uh, but we got to cycle back to the Toronto Blue Jays land, folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people, ever since the Otani stuff happened, they've been talking about what this team needs. What this team needs. And it's, it's effectively, well, it is what we needed beforehand, and that is a power bat in the middle of the lineup to drive in runs. Mm. That is That was the need all last year. That was the need mm. all last year that remains the need right now, especially, even though he wasn't phenomenal, but especially with Matt Chapman no longer on the team, especially with Brandon Belt mm-hmm. no longer on the team, with Merrifield no longer on the team. There was a lot of holes on this team that now you know are really popping up and, and resurfacing because we didn't mm-hmm. get Shohei Otani. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where can we get one of these power bats, Nick? That's... <laughs> That's pretty tough. There's not many of them out there. No, there isn't, dude. So (laughs) potentially the best way to do it would be internally and just having the guys who were supposed to get it done, get it done. Guerrero participated in a little uh, home run derby for charity. Uh, And folks, if you watched some of these clubs, I had this on repeat for a solid like, you know, three, four, five minutes today, just watching this guy swing this metal bat. Now, granted, they are metal bats, so they are flying (laughs) out of the stadium. (laughs) But that's a nice swing right there, dude. And his body 
I mean, I you know, his body looks good. Yeah. I don't want to overreact Swing too much. Swing looks good too, man. Yeah. He's getting his whole backside into it. You can really see his backside lifts off the ground there at the end. That's kind of lo- lo- reminding me, just his back foot leaving the ground for a bit. That's Bryce Harper 2015 MVP back foot, if I've ever seen one. Well, that is a pretty good back foot to have, man. <laughs> and I do think that Guerrero, he is going to be of the utmost importance in 2024. I mean, we've said it time and time again, and we said it last year. We said it here. We literally said it since this guy comes up, came up. But if he goes, we go. And I think that you really saw it last year where he was going. Like, his season is kind of very representative of the Blue Jays season where it's like, it was good, and we were getting it. You know, we were going, and we were was, getting it done. It was great off the start. Like it off was the great start, off the start. It was amazing. <laughs> the then, Blue Jays, great off the start. Literally. Eighteen and nine record. You know, the uh, uh, Vladdy was hitting over three hundred. Bo Bichette was hitting over three hundred. Like he still was. Mm. Matt Chapman was hitting over three hundred. We we're like, damn, we got three dogs mm. in the middle of the lineup. And then what the fuck? Yeah. Like where where the hell did they go? They, they virtually fell off the face of the earth. Now, granted, not Bo Bichette. He stayed up there. Matt Chapman died. Where the hell did he go? His bat was vanished from the Blue Jays lineup. But then Vlad, he kept expanding, swinging. I and I do believe it's because he literally had zero protection in that lineup. Who was right. behind him? Yeah. Who the hell was behind Vladdy on any given day? Kirk Varsho. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love Danny Jansen, but I'd much rather face Danny Jansen than Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So you're getting a steady diet of sliders away. Okay, that's a different topic. We'll talk about bringing in protection later. But if Vladdy could just lock it in and punish those uh, pitchers mm. for coming in the middle of the zone, and then if you give him protection, that batting average or that on base is going to go up. He's going to get better pitches to hit if you give him protection. So he can start doing some more damage when he's in the best shape well, of his the, life. The problem right now is the fact that there is there is currently no protection. There's now, not. now I do anticipate that the Toronto Blue Jays are going to go out and they're going to get somebody. But I think that unless you get someone of the caliber – uh, Bellinger or uh, I think probably the last guy on that tier mm-hmm. list might be Soler. I could also throw in Hernandez too. I mean, he protected him before. Yeah, potentially Hernandez, right? But again, if Hernandez has the season that he had last yeah. year, then it's not it's I'm, not that same thing. Yeah. He's got to bounce back. Yeah, right? yeah. He's got to do more. He's got to do something, right? So Guerrero's got to be that much better to make up for that. Right, mm-hmm. because we don't know if there's going to be somebody behind him that can swing the bat as good as you know Teo did in in 2021. Yep. Right, because that was the protection that he needed, and it gave him the opportunity to get the pitches that he wanted to. But having Vlad come back and show the league what he's capable of, we need that dude to shut up some of these MLB analysts yeah. that, that say that this is a small time feel that say that this is this is a bad yeah. city for baseball right Man. we yeah. need that we need a superstar I, I really do think 2023 was a poor example of having a winning team in Toronto and having no excitement like 2022 yeah there was uh, there was definitely more excitement than 2023 2021 the excitement was through the roof because mm-hmm. they were back in Toronto after a covid season you had Simeon and Vladdy popping off we're, we're we're making a big run we're making a big run in a full season where we're seeing our team that was exciting but 2023 was the worst season to watch because there was no excitement in that lineup you know offense drives the fans to the ballpark by themselves mm-hmm. right the pitching was amazing, but we had no offense. So I think getting Vladdy back is going to bring that excitement back to Toronto and bring that drive to try and bring home a chip yet again. Yeah, agreed, dude. Shout out to a few donations that we have here. Deep Dive Jay saying Bellinger oh. and Chapman or Bellinger, Bellinger and Chapman or Bellinger and Hung and Young Ho Lee. Uh, interesting one right there. Chapman's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. I might go for the second one. I might go right second there one. Just to save some money. But, I mean, if you can just kick the can down the road consistently, like, who gives a crap? Yeah. Right? Like, so let's just sign everybody and pay them $1 million every year yeah. and kick the can down the road, you know, till, you know, 2050 for all I care. Yeah. Got another one coming in here from we Jay did. Reese that I missed right here saying, I'm a Dodgers fan and I get, th- I, and I get, that everyone gets a gets feeling away, but let's be honest. Every team has the option to do this, and why not go go out and get Yamamoto and Soto next off season? No, listen. Sure. We, we came out and we said that that is good business from the LA Dodgers. It's very smart and it's very intelligent. However, it is something that the MLB is going to need to tackle, right? Because I don't think that you you want necessarily to have a league where your best players are getting paid two million, and then all right. of this deferred cash is like you know getting cycled through weird channels. Like I, I think Look, that they put the luxury tax in there to stop stuff like that from happening. Right. It, it, well, they put the luxury tax in there to stay. It's called the competitive balance act. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> like right. right. Like like competitive. Balance 
balance so that we can not have these super teams, right? So I think that might be addressed in the next CBA. Sure it will. Like, it, I'm, sure, I'm sure it absolutely it will. Um, but for right now, it makes sense. Because, look, if you want to screw your team in the future, screw your team in the future. Then you won't be competitive in 10 years from now. You know, if you, if you keep doing that, yeah, sure, you'll win now. But, again, you won't be competitive later. It's almost like all these, like, if you think about fantasy football, when you're trading draft picks mm -hmm, away, mm -hmm. so you get all these super teams now and then all these, like, crap teams later. That's kind of what it feels like. But, again, that defeats the whole purpose of the competitive balance. Yeah, yeah and, I mean, Otani's situation is very different, too, because you do have the Wayne Gretzky or the Tom Brady of your, of your given yeah. sport. And, of course, you're going to buy in now. You yeah, have to buy it now, to. right? It's like you are going to go all in on this guy. And if you don't win a chip with him or you don't win two chips, mm -hmm. then everybody's going to be looking at you and saying you wasted his entire yep. career, right? So yep. it really just – it's the perfect storm of everything. And I think that, you know, every other fan base out here is just a little bitter at the fact that, like, my goodness gracious, we might need to watch the L.A. Dodgers make the World Series – five six seven times in the next decade maybe mm -hmm. that's an exaggeration but who the hell's gonna stop them you know if mm -hmm. they have this super team that that they're, they're creating right mm -hmm. now oh uh, we just got jordan N. love the decorations boy shout out to you jordan N. yeah i got a little christmas vibe going on in the stream had to get a little pick me up you know after this uh debacle of a of a i guess off season yeah so shout out to brian california saying uh the otani aav hit is still 46 million a year i don't think that that's the case somebody correct me in the chat if i, that is I heard the case, something but. like that but again that was right before we went live and i, mm. I was like I, I i can't right look at this okay well somebody correct someone, us in the someone, chat yeah. if, that, if that is or is not the case all i know is that two million dollars a year yeah sure as hell isn't a yeah. whole lot all right oh Jay, they, sorry go ahead. So i was gonna say we do have one more thing uh, speaking of otani we do have one more thing we want to bring up on this on this uh, show. You want to bring it up right now? I don't know what you're talking about, so go ahead. All right, let's do it. Uh, guys, really quick before we do it, let's bring up the next sponsor of today's live Blue Jays Today show. Time for two covered bridge covered potato, potato chips. chips. Made with ingredients from the St. John River Valley, Valley and cooked carefully in a, in a local, local factory. factory. They've got tons They've got of great tons flavors like smoke and barbecue, barbecue, sea salt, and sour and cream and onion. onion. Get a taste of this delicious flavor cooked the old fashioned way. Now, back to the content. Yes, shout out to Covered Bridge Potato Chips. Absolutely kind of sad that we're actually out of them all right yeah, now. Yeah, so. literally. <laughs> like, shout out to Covered Bridge. Yeah. Can we get some more? Yeah, can you just send, please? Them, just send them over, guys? That'd be sweet. Um, uh, we do want to talk about... Yeah. yeah, I forgot that we were going to bring this up, everybody. Um, listen, there were some conspiracy theories that went out. And I do want to preface all of this stuff by yes. saying, don't believe anything. Question <laughs> everything. Question everything everything especially folks. if they're parody accounts especially, especially if they're parody, if they're accounts. parody yeah, accounts we got screwed over uh, uh time last week too with all of the stuff that was going yeah. on but everybody got screwed over you know by by john morosi got screwed over yeah. mlb got screwed over we got screwed over you guys got screwed over because nobody had any idea what the hell was going on last week and yeah. i think that that just reminds everybody that okay listen we gotta be skeptical everybody's out there trying to make a buck even us. Yep. So uh, you question yep. every single thing. That being said, folks, let's scroll over and look at what Tom Verducci yep. had to say. This guy is somebody who works, you know, MLB Network, works with all of the places, yep. has sports, been around the block. Sports Illustrated. He's a baseball writers association. He's a member of that. And again, you could say, well, so is that guy who on Dodgers Nation. But here's the thing. He got screwed over too. And we're going to bring up exactly what the theory is on that. Mm -hmm. So, he came out and he said this in an article. Let's read it off for y'all to see here. On Friday, reports broke that Otani's signing was imminent and that he was headed to Toronto to sign with the Blue Jays, right? We were all there. Yeah. We didn't, weren't there. You, ha you missed hell of a story. Uh, the report was completely... God, you want... Erroneous. Erroneous. I've never heard that word in my life. Erroneous. The Dodgers didn't know that. They held meetings Friday night with an air of worry. The rumors were likely false. They decided that they still created an angst among the L uh, Los Angeles executives. You just don't know, uh, uh, says one of the Dodger executives when asked about the Friday night meetings. That's the best way to describe it. We just don't know. It wasn't a comfortable feeling. But again, he goes on to keep saying a lot in this article he wrote. And Brandon Weil, shout out to Brandon Weil right here. Uh, he kind of quoted and just summed up everything that Tom had to say. Uh, it is Tom, right? Yes, Tom. He said this, so putting it all the pieces together, and again, take what you will from this, Otani hoped to land with the Dodgers. It was reported early he knew where he wanted to go, gave them a chance for a final offer. Agent likely, initial, uh, likely initially wasn't getting the money he wanted. Someone, Otani's camp question mark, 
leaked that he was signing with the Blue Jays and he was traveling to Toronto. After those leaks, Dodgers thought they might lose him and came up with final offer. Right. So essentially, he's saying the rumors were created allegedly because he wanted to get a better offer from the Dodgers. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you say what you will about Scott Boris, and he is a slimy guy. He's a <laughs> slimy dude. Uh, but I don't think even he could cook up something like this. Right? That's like, mastermind. Like if, if this is if, true, if and it's again, true. right, you got to address all of this with a grain of salt because God only knows what people are trying to make up right now. It does make sense, but so did a lot of the other stuff that we were hearing about Shohei Otani made a lot of sense. If someone from Otani's camp went out, leaked all of this stuff, you know, had had everybody tracking a flight, tr tried to, you know, like cause all of these conspiracy theories, and then just watch the world burn, all I have to say is G fucking G. I because, mean, like, you there's nothing against it. Because, like, you played us like a fiddle. You played John Morosi like a fiddle. You played J.P. Hornstra like a fiddle. You played so many people like a fiddle. Uh, fiddle. I will say, though, it is really shitty because a lot of those guys, their careers aren't going to recover. Yeah. And that's something that if you, if this is something that somebody did, that's what you did. It's diabolical. Right? It really is diabolical. Because now you have, nine, I'd say, 90% of people on social media. Maybe it seems that way because of all the comments. 90% of social media just hates John Morosi now. Sure. Just hates uh, Dodgers Nation now. It, it, it's it's incredible. I mean, I mean, look, if I'm the agent, and, and this is the biggest payday I'm ever going to get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the biggest payday ever. I am willing to do whatever it takes to get an extra slice of that pie, another 200, 150 million. Apparently the Jays offer was actually around that $700 million pretty mark. Close, pretty close. But he wanted to play in LA, mm -hmm. right? He wants to get a big slice of the pie there, right there in LA. Again, GG. I mean, hell, I don't even know if I could do it, but maybe with $700 million staring me in the face and I'm getting a cut of that, maybe I do something diabolical. Well, money takes, money makes us, it changes no, us a little 100%, bit, you know? 100%, dude. And I, I will say this, right? Like, we we still don't know how true or we not don't know. this is. We don't like, know. We don't know how much John Morosi ran with, because I don't think that John Morosi is 100% innocent in this either, right? right. Apparently, right. in good journalism, in, in this is something that I was, I was talking to somebody, you know, who knows about journalism about this, good journalism, you're supposed to have two completely individual sources from another that are right. not impacted by each other come to you with the same piece of information right and then and then you could say okay well i had these two people who are not who are not connected in any possible way i did not try to get the information from them they came to me with it mm -hmm. now i can potentially report on something even though i need to do more research so we don't know if john Rossi got that or didn't get that right? right right we have no idea what went down i imagine he was trying to be quick about it and jump the gun to yep. be the first one on it i think we're assuming again assuming this situation is correct he got it straight from the horse's mouth, the agency, mm -hmm. and was like, oh shit, he's on his way to Toronto. I gotta tweet this out as fast boom, as possible. Boom, I'm boom. not gonna do any because, investigation because what, I wanna be the first. Because what was already happening? Everybody was already tracking this flight. Mm -hmm. The rumors was around. Oh, I'm gonna confirm this rumor. Yeah, sure. I'm, and I'm gonna be the one. And you messed up, John. Yeah, exactly. Look, look and, and you know, shout out to Jay uh, Reyes who's saying, uh, you know, if this is true, do you forgive Morosi? Yes and no. I would say, I mean, look, you did mess up. Your job is to be accurate with the journalism. You did mess up, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, again, um, I think there was other factors involved that uh, aren't getting enough uh, uh, blame. Yeah, a thousand percent, dude. So it's just like one, and I said this a ton of times when we were live, one massive shit show, guys. Yes. Otani got all the money in the world. We got screwed over. A few of the reporters got screwed over, even though they might have played a role in it. Yep. Uh, yeah, but did. look, it, you know, this is, this is business. Otani played us. And we got leveraged. And people kept commenting and saying, you guys are getting leveraged. You guys are getting leveraged. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> I did not want to believe it. We got leveraged. Oh, so fuck listen, yeah, we did. You fool me once, shame, you know, fool me once, sh uh, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We are not going to get fooled again, everybody. All of the rumors about Cody Bellinger and Jorge Soler and everybody, until Jeff Passan puts his goddamn stamp on it, mm -hmm. take it with a grain of salt, folks. Mm -hmm. Take it with a grain of salt. Absolutely. Uh, guys, any last kind of wrapping up thoughts? I know a lot of y'all are feeling the same pain in here, but I'm actually glad that we got to just kind of voice that out just a little bit, man. Yeah, a thousand Cause, percent. Because, look, I, I, I'm so ready to move on, and I think the rest, unless there's more Otani craziness coming out, like the contract today, 
I'm ready to move on and focus on what the Blue Jays got to do to get better because it's it's almost mid December and we haven't made a single goddamn we move. We have not made a single move yet, everybody. Now there are still ways to salvage this off season to get us back. Right, we're not gonna have the A plus off season that everybody hoped for with Shohei Otani. But if you bring me somebody like a Cody Bellinger, I think Yamamoto's out of the question for sure. Yeah, now. he's, he's, he's going to the LA yeah. Dodgers. I am so sure about that. Yeah. But if you can bring me some, one of those power bats. Now we're talking. Ross, mm -hmm. you should be feeling this more than anybody. Go prove these guys wrong. Let those MLB analysts fuel you. Toronto's yep. a small town, uh, small time vibe. <laughs> prove them wrong, bro. Do it. Get me somebody who can hit home runs. Do it. Do it. Guys, uh, uh, shout out real, real quick to Ryan saying, next move for the Jays. That's our next podcast coming out tomorrow, folks. So stay tuned, everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in. 621 of y'all in here. If you haven't already, guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well, guys. Because again, more podcasts, more lives, collaborations, video rooms, minute monologues, you name it, all right here. Get your Blue Jays news on Blue Jays today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And go, go Jays, go! go!